the more business they can drive to themselves, the more profits they're going to make. And that's all they're looking at. We're all in the same boat and we're all, you know, praying month to month. Money talks and everything else walks. Independent pharmacy doesn't have a strong enough voice because there's not enough money. We've all noticed the closures in our communities or read the headlines. More than 307 independent pharmacies have closed nationwide in the past three months. But the reasons behind the closures aren't as simple as they ran out of money. KDK investigator Megan Schiller learned that independent pharmacists in our area blame middlemen who they say are sucking the life out of your community pharmacy. It is a crisis hitting our area really hard. About 30 independent pharmacies shut down in Pennsylvania so far this year, and 19 are right here in western Pennsylvania. Since I started the story, about four or five have closed. But it's the consumer who will pay the ultimate price, whether that's with your cold hard cash, your time, or your safety. Inside Hilltop Pharmacy in Pittsburgh's Allentown neighborhood, they're bleeding money. It's very hard to explain it to the average person. You know, all they know is they come in and they have to pay a copay, if they have to pay a copay. They know nothing that happens on the back end of that transaction. Pharmacist and owner Patrick Lavella shows us his receipts. So this one cost $38.77. We lost $4.80. This is Humulin insulin. Cost $1,705 and change. We lost $75. He says he's losing money because of what's called a PBM, a pharmacy benefit manager. Independent pharmacies sign contracts with these PBMs in our area like Express Scripts or CVS Caremark. Those PBMs work as middlemen between health plans and drug manufacturers, negotiating prices with drug companies and setting the reimbursement rates for pharmacies. Our reimbursements, it's a percentage that we're being paid in that reimbursement. So as those prices go up, the percentage we're being reimbursed is decreasing. So what we're buying it for is not being covered. Take a look at this sample three-year contract from the PBM Express Scripts. It will reimburse the pharmacy for brand name drugs, the average wholesale price minus 25%. For 90-day prescriptions, it's worse at the average wholesale price minus 30.5%. That means they're losing money on almost every brand name prescription they fill. And pharmacists tell KDKA when they refuse to sign the new contracts, they later receive letters saying they'll be enrolled again unless they opt out. That's all we're asking for is, is fair reimbursement. That's all we want. Jamie Wiles owns this medicine shop on Mount Washington and says no one would sign up for a business with margins like this. Between January 1 and now, um, brand name medications that we dispensed. We spent $260,000 to get those medicines for our patients and our, we grossed $1,100 on that spent, which is, you can't make it. And unlike chain pharmacies like CVS, Rite Aid, and Giant Eagles with thousands of square feet of retail space out front, they can't absorb the losses behind the pharmacy counters like the big guys. We're all in the same boat and we're all, you know, praying month to month. I wanted to take one specific drug, for example. This is Synthroid. A lot of people take this for their thyroid issues. It costs the pharmacy $134 to get this bottle. But if you put it in the system, they're reimbursed $71, which for every bottle leaves them in the red $63.47. And it's hit after hit for pharmacist Adam Rice. I filled a 90-day prescription for a very low-cost blood pressure medicine, 90 tablets. I got paid 86 cents. That 86 cents is supposed to cover the 90 tablets, the bottle, the label, the cap, the labor, the bag, the paper insert, the receipt, and my time to counsel them for 86 cents. Rice got the ear of his state rep, Jessica Benham, when she came in to grab her prescriptions and now she's pushing legislation. It gives our insurance department more oversight over these PBMs, and it also is going to limit or ban certain practices by PBMs. Things like patient steering, where they encourage patients to go to a pharmacy that's vertically integrated with the PBM or the insurance company, or spread pricing, where the PBM takes a lot of money from the insurance company for a prescription and then doesn't pass enough of it on to the pharmacy for the pharmacy to make money or even break even. Would you call what's happening predatory? So I would call what is happening the result of a, a predatory system.
Texas. KDK Investigates reached out to the two big PBMs in our area. Express Scripts said in part, it relentlessly advocates on behalf of the people we serve to make life-saving therapies and medications more accessible and affordable. We are committed to reimbursing pharmacies fairly while ensuring our customers have safe, quality pharmacies in their network. CVS Caremark said it recently introduced True Cost and plans to launch Cost Advantage, saying in part, and True Cost will enable a pharmacy reimbursement structure in which CVS Caremark will be better positioned to reimburse pharmacies for drugs based on their acquisition costs with dispensing fees that reflect the services they provide to their patients. We sponsor baseball teams, Little League. We donate to various organizations. Um, we go to different events. You know, we, we do things in a community to help whether they're our patients or not our patients. It's just what we do. You know, I know Rite Aid down the street, they won't even let you hang a flyer in the, in the window. Rite Aid and Giant Eagle did not respond to our requests for comment. In our next story, we are taking questions, the questions from these independent pharmacists straight to the governor. He said PBM reform is a top priority in his budget address, so what does he plan to do about it? Also, we're talking with more independent pharmacists about the community impact they feel will be lost if they disappear like so many of their friends. Kim?